Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Void, a show dedicated to filling the void between being an employee and becoming self-employed. Most people refer to starting your own company as taking the leap, as if they're blindly jumping off a cliff and into the unknown. This show is here to help you understand that it doesn't have to be that way. As always, if you like what you're hearing on the show, please do us a favor and help share the void with somebody else who might be wanting to start their own company. We saw an opportunity to help others understand that self-employment is well within your reach, and just as our businesses have grown organically and by word of mouth, we want this show to grow the same way. So if you see somebody asking questions about starting their own service-based business, please do us a favor and share them a link to the show. I'm your host, Mitch Smedley, and with me as always is David Hilton. Dude, do you think people forward through our intro? Probably. If you're a repeat listener, you're hitting the, they're, they're the hitting skip the 15. Skip, yep. The skip 15. That's what I call it. Is that what it is? That, how long is it? Well, on, when I you hit the skip 15, is it 15 seconds at a whack? Like yeah. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. So you like tap it four times and burn through the intro. And you're right through the intro? Yep. Interesting. So, so like, like for all Shapiro's ads, it, they're all a minute long. So bop, 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 bop. Yeah, you tap it four times. Yeah. Like I do it with uh, Rogan's <laughs> ads. I listen to a lot yeah. of Rogan. So mm. just four taps. Oh, yeah. it's another commercial. Four more taps. And I'm back in. Yeah. I was, you know, I had something smart out to say. And I thought, you know what? I wonder if people listen to that every time. Yeah. I think some people probably do. Some people do. Like but, I will so like when I turn stuff on like even like if I'm in my office and I'll play I'm gonna sound like such a loser here I like to listen to full albums yeah like albums that came out and I will listen from the first track and every song yeah well now on YouTube it's like every five songs there's an ad or whatever oh yeah well I'm doing stuff and it's like I'm so trained by the radio from like 15 years ago that I will still like I'll just keep working yeah and, and then I'm like oh. I can skip that. Yeah, I can't tell it's you like how I'm many so Athletic Greens dumb. commercials I've listened to on Rogan. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, why? <laughs> yeah. I can just reach over and be like, click, yeah. skip, 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 well, you, skip. But for the guy listening just, to this show where he's got his earbuds in <sighs> and his phone's in his pocket and his yeah. hands are full, yeah. sorry, buddy, you got to listen to our ads. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or you got to listen to Mitch's intro for the 9,999th time. Now, we, if he's hitting play... We all apologize. He, if he's hitting play... <laughs> He's already he's hitting play and then skip fifteen four times just to get into it. Yeah, he might be. <laughs> What's funny is I have like a break between the show and the ad, and the ad's like noticeably louder. Mm -hmm. So it's like is something playing. So God. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that the, there's a little pause between. We, so we have two ads, right? Yeah. yeah. And and there's a little pause, and then all of a sudden the ad comes in, and it's a little louder than yeah. the rest of the for show. All of you, for all of those wondering, like why I sound clueless, because I don't listen to the show. Yeah. I just, <laughs> David's listened I to a whopping three <laughs> podcasts in his life, and never one has been this one. First, first <laughs> off, I listened to the first ten, and they were so bad, I was like, I can't listen we to this We sucked shit. back then. Well, I, I thought yeah. about it. We didn't have Austin. Well, thank you. I, I'm... <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because I don't know why they were. You know, they weren't. I, I should we say We were that. bad. They weren't bad. They were just, they're not nearly as, and I say that. I've listened to it. I listen to probably one every other week or whatever, but not the newest one. I'll just go and pick one and see, you know, what it's like. Right. They're, they, they weren't really that bad. I mean, they're a lot better now. I will say that. Sound quality is better. Videos are better. Uh, banter is better. Banter. Is that a, is that cor a correct phrasing banter I need to cut that out banter is put better. it on my website or something <laughs> well no I thought about you I'm should like, do that I thought about changing the volume of the ads but then my comical side goes no no it's pretty funny yeah, yeah. no it's funny let's just leave it in there <laughs> because they're gonna be like because when you're listening to it it goes dead quiet for like six I try to play it where I'm like okay what's like a comfortable amount of pause yeah it's, and it's just long enough Mississippi. where you're gonna reach for your phone in your pocket three Mississippi ad starts yeah. and it's like gonna be great like it's gonna be great if they're already listening to it like at a max volume and then they hit get hit with that ad oh <laughs> yeah. yeah that just makes you want to your ears are bleeding I run cheap earbuds they're never loud enough for me so I uh, have no earbuds doing a review check here on on Spotify why and we've only got 33 five star reviews Mm. We haven't crept up at all. So if I, you're listening to this on Spotify, I blame you. Well, you know what? You need to hit. You need to hit the social you, you, media shit up. You got to hit. It. You got to hit the back button once, and you got to give us a five star review. You just said, look, the guys' phones are in their pockets, and they well, got their earbuds pause, in. Well, pause. Put put the pipe down or the <laughs> the board or 
the roll of wire, whatever you're holding on to. He, he completely missed it. Yeah, not the crack pipe. I'm just saying, you <laughs> missed. You said it. I didn't. I didn't well, see shit, man. I don't want to alienate our customers. If you're holding a crack pipe, put that down, and then and yeah, and then yeah. like the void. Yeah, yeah, like I'm not going to be like, oh, I don't want you to burn your customer's house down. Like smoke yeah. your crack later. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what just happened to this show. We are off the rails. Derailed. And it's fucking five minutes in, bro. All right. What do you want to talk about today? With Look, full exclosure. Mitch talked a lot in the Ex- pre-show. Exclosure? Exclosure, what'd I say? You said exclosure. That's not even a word. Full disclosure. Oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> full disclosure. Says the guy who said jalopy, like a few hot <laughs> pass. Uh, jalopy yeah, actually, is a word. Actually, it is a word. You know how I found that out? I was watching a show from the 1950s. I yes. love Lucy. Yeah. And they said jalopy. Yeah, so yeah. I mean. The Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. A long time. That, that says something too, like a 60-year-old TV show. Yeah. Says so, jalopy. So full It's been disclosure. a word for a while. There you go. Mitch talked a lot in the pre-show and I didn't listen to any of it. This I was is, talking about other stuff. This is not news. Yes, it is news. <laughs> I was Usually listening. I'm playing. I'm paying attention. Playing attention. This Play. is what happens for those of you uh, listening. I haven't slept in like three nights for some reason, so I'm pretty looped out. Yeah. So we'll see how the show goes. <laughs> It, it's a great night to go over to Dave's house and bang on his windows at 2 a.m. It could be interesting. <laughs> that's how the 300 gets pulled out and you get <laughs> that, shot in the that's front That's how yard. you die. That's how you die at dumb my house. Dumb ways to I thought die. About putting the ad, dumb ways to die, that's right. I thought about putting the ad further back. There was one episode where <laughs> there was so much banter at the beginning where it was like eight minutes of banter and then all of a sudden it was like the ad. So they hadn't heard actually any content yet. <laughs> and so someone's right. like, well, what do I say through the ad? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're at six minutes now. Right. Hey, if you like what you're hearing on The Void and you want even more info, we just started a mentorship program specifically for trades professionals to start their business or to get their business to an incredibly healthy position. So if you'd like more info, click on the link in the description of this show. Okay, All right, back so on track, Mitch. What do you want to talk about, buddy? We have, so this episode drops on a Thursday, and then two days after this episode drops, we have our first big in-person trade wins event. Well, it's and not just trade wins. It's trade wins, but it's open to everyone. Right? Trade, yeah. Trade wins is putting it on, but it's open to the public. Um, and um, uh, so we've got eight badass speakers lined up all day long. Like we are pounding the knowledge out. Like it is going to be badass. And so, well, they are. They are. Well, we're producing it, so we get. I'm going to be sucking. We up get the to info. be badass by. I'm going to be by sucking default. up the info. Yeah. Like I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah. So, well, that's good. A few of the, spe- you're, you're I'm in the speakers. <laughs> I'm in a few of the speakers. I'm actually looking forward to it. I, I hope. I will be on the stage. Yep. I'm hoping that I uh, can do a good job. Yeah. We'll see. Um, so, um, what we wanted to do with this show was whether you're attending our in person event or not, um, we wanted to kind of give you some parameters for how to get the most out of attending any events, right? And so um, the three topics that we've picked for today all have to do with learning and your interactions with people and coaching and all of that kind of stuff. So topic one is going to be the four levels of learning. Topic two is about how life is just a series of interactions. And topic three is coaching. So topic one. Give it to me. We've got the four levels of learning. Okay. Um. I'm going to run through the levels, and then I'm going to give you an an example of how these levels manifest themselves in reality. Okay. Okay. So level one is we don't know what we don't know. Level two is we know what we don't know. Level three is we know what we know. And level four is we don't know what we know. Hey, guys, I'm also confused. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So... Dun, dun, dun. We don't know what we don't know. Picture <laughs> picture your first time in a car, right? You're 14 or 15, you're getting your learner's permit, and you're like, you don't know how to get the car in drive. You don't know what's the gas and what's the brake. You don't know how, to, how hard to push on each of the pedals. You're confused on how much you have to turn the steering wheel or where the blinkers are. You know, is the shifter on the column? Is it on the floor? You know, what's it going to feel like when I hit the pedal, right? Okay. We don't know what we don't know. We're so new into this experience. That everything is... Everything is new. Everything is learning. Right. It's everything you touch is a learning experience. And 
not only is it a learning experience, but it's also opening the door to other learning experiences that you didn't even know you were about ready to experience. We don't know what we don't know. Right. Right. So okay. in, 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 you know, you don't know that the car is going to ding at you if you don't put the seatbelt on. You don't know that you, if you stab the brake, the tires lock up, right? Um, or, or, you know, all of those things, right? There's so much experience with learning how to drive a car. So level two is we know what we don't know. So very quickly after getting behind the wheel of the car, you start grabbing onto things and you start identifying, right? But it's still... Like you realize I'm lost. You realize you're lost. Yeah. And so now, like, I know what I don't know. Your I, brain your brain literally is like in overdrive at yeah. this point. Like, right? okay, I know how to corner, but mm. I don't know how fast I should corner. Yeah. Right? I don't know what's too slow or too fast. So I'm aware of what I don't know now. Right? Yes. So, and that's like level two of learning. First of all, we were totally blindsided by everything. Next, we know enough to know that we don't know shit. Right? Yeah. That's probably the scariest. Um, yeah. Right. Like right. that's that's the self realization moment. Right. Like well, oh, I could be in trouble here. And and how many times in life where it's like, <laughs> uh, oh, what is it like? Ego is telling everybody everything you know, but wisdom is recognizing that you don't know everything. Yeah. Right. That's level yeah. two of learning. Yes. And here, wisdom is coming in in the peripherals of level two. Right. Yeah. So it's level like, three is we know what we know. Okay, so level three is like, okay, you've gotten your driver's license, maybe you're 17 or 18. You know that, okay, I got to get in the car, I got to push on the brake, I got to put my seatbelt on, I got to put it in drive, I got to hit the gas gently, you know, I got to look around for traffic, like, you know, all the things, right? Level four is where I would hope you and I are, where driving becomes so automatic, you can do it without even thinking about it. Yeah, right. It's, it's not like, it, at level three, if a deer jumps out in front of you, you're consciously thinking, I have to push on the brake. How hard can I push on yeah, the brake? I got to swerve. Right. You, you, you're thinking about every motion. Yeah. Level four. You're subconsciously doing it because you just know. It's, it's, right? it's so habit, right? This is, this is so weird you brought this so, up. So, so I took my grandma fishing one time. Okay. And literally I'm driving down the highway. I've got my knee on the steering wheel. Right. And I've got one arm up on the armrest on the left on the windows down. Right. And I got the other one and I'm just... I, I think I was just holding a drink or whatever, and she's like, "Don't you drive with your knee with your grandma's in the car?" And I'm I, like, "I don't even realize, you yeah. know, that I'm even doing it." Right. And I'm just, it's like I've I've done that for 15 years. Yeah. Where it's just subconscious, and you just know right. everything that's going on. Right. Like that's the pinnacle, right? And, and so that's why level four is we don't know what we know. In other words, it's become such habit that we're not even aware we even know it. Right. Yeah. And and so, um. A correlation to real life would be like my my wife is constantly in amazement of how much I know about plumbing, right? And it's because she doesn't know shit about plumbing, right? She knows a little, I mean, but not not a lot, right? Yeah. And so, like, there'll be some customer that calls in with some really tough thing, and they'll say like three other companies have been out here, and nobody can figure it out. And then I would go run the call and get them all fixed and get you know, yeah, collect and get a five star review, and she's just like. How do you even know that? And I'm like, I don't, I just know. It's right? 20 years. It's 20 it's years. 20 exactly. years of experience. It's 20 years this of experience. just like when you called, so last weekend, was it last weekend you were out of town? Yeah. It was last weekend. Mitch calls me and says, hey, my air isn't working. Yeah. Said, okay. Yeah, I can go over there tomorrow and look at it. And literally, I'm thinking the whole time, I know he has geo. I said, man, I bet his condensate is plugged. It's yeah. got to be, his condensate has got to be plugged. That's a got, so we, I come over to the house and I just asked Mason, I said, how do you turn this back on? He goes, well, you got to turn the zone panel on. Uh, okay. I turned it on. I said, it's going to fire up, fire right up yep. instantly. Yep. I took the thing off for the condensate thing. And I said, I bet this thing's just plugged up. That's all. Yep. And, and literally it was just like, you and don't even realize like that a new guy is going to go over there and work on that and be there for two hours. Right. Trying to learn and figure out what's going on. But you've been doing something for so long that you just. Yep. That does roll into that uh, imposter syndrome a little bit when you almost take for granted how much you know. And then you're just like, well, it was easy for me, so I'm going to charge less. Right. That yeah. imposter syndrome Good only point. creeps in on the fourth level of learning. Right. If you're in the fourth level and you're you're lacking awareness of, yeah. of just how much you know. 
Yeah. That's where imposter syndrome creeps in because it comes so easy well, to you. Well, and you don't want to, <clears throat> and that imposter syndrome, we're going to get a little off track here, but like that's where you start saying, well, I'm not going to charge you, just like Austin was saying. And you feel yeah. bad too because you're like, man, this is so, like, because there's so many things where someone's like, hey, can you put together this? And it like literally takes me like half an hour. Yeah, right. but it's, <laughs> they pay you, they're paying you for your knowledge, mm-hmm. not the work that you're doing necessarily, well, right? Also, so as, as tradesmen, it's difficult to we have overcome this, sometimes. Well, is it really anybody? <clears throat> we have this false image in our head that becoming a millionaire is this incredibly difficult thing. <clears throat> and so we're resigned to a certain level of difficulty with success. And so yeah, because of that, <clears throat> we look at we don't know what we know, and we undercharge for our services because it wasn't difficult. And I, c- I can only be charging for my services if it's difficult. Well, shit, after 20 years, it better not be difficult. No, because I'm in the wrong freaking career. If it's difficult, you miss something. Right. Like, also, yeah, you, it's time to move on. You right. do kind of like lose a little bit of a touch. Like once you get so much <clears> into a field where like something that's just like common knowledge to you. Like, oh, yeah, you just up the resolution to this. And someone's like, wait, how do I open the program? And you're like, oh, oh god, click right. that button that looks like it has the green and the blue. When it opens up, let it open. And then you're yeah, like, yeah, this is just, this is just like my brother. My brother is like, yeah, he's like a savant to, when it comes to that shit. It comes to computers. I call like Mitchell call me and say, hey, we're having this problem. I call Joe and I say, hey, fix this. It's it's 30 seconds. Yeah. Like I can barely open a file. Right. Right. And so like when he does websites for people like he should be charging fifteen thousand dollars for these sites that are just amazing. Yeah. He's like, well, I charged him thirty five hundred. I'm like, why? Right. But he doesn't realize that no one else knows that knowledge. Right. Like no one else can do that. They have to pay you or somebody else. And guess what? Somebody else is charging. Yeah. Fifteen grand. They're charging fifteen thousand. Right. Dude, get over it. Right. Like. Right. Come on, bro. Yeah. I was I was just talking with a guy today who is currently on. Uh, time and material. He's selling his services, time and material, and he's moving over to flat rate. You talking about one of our guys? Uh, no. Okay. No. So this was the guy that I was helping get the flat rate book implemented today. Okay. Gotcha. And for gotcha, those gotcha, that don't gotcha. know, uh, Trade Winds is soon to come out with a flat rate book for plumbing. So First off, if we you have, listen to this show, we have the flat rate book. It's going to yeah. be on the website, tradewindsconsulting.com. Yeah. Probably by Saturday. Forward slash what? Products? Is that what it's? Uh, what, what's it under? Just go to dot com and there is a product services button you can click on. There you go. And there's all trade kinds of stuff. Trade wins like winning in the trades. T R A D E W I N S. Yeah. And to no clear, D. And to we clarify, don't want the D. Oh, sorry, keep interrupting. Also to clarify on that too, when someone hears flat rate pricing, that doesn't mean that you're not thinking about hourly. Like it's it's like predetermined. People no. they, they hear that and they're like, Oh, it's flat rate pricing, then it's not like per hour. It's like you you, it's like an allotted per yeah. hour. Well, you, you're building in a certain yeah. amount of time, right? But yeah. But I was as I was helping him implement the flat rate book, we were kind of comparing what the new prices will be to some <clears> of his <throat> invoices that he's had, and like we were looking at two invoices from the same for the same repair, but from two different plumbers on his team, right? Oh, okay. And and so I'm like, look, this <clears> guy <throat> charged three sixty for this repair. This guy charged five forty for this repair. And what gonna, was the realistic price to the price book? The realistic price ended up being about five forty. Okay. Okay. But the the story there was I said without even looking further, I, I don't even know your team, but I'm gonna I'm willing to get the, I'm willing to bet the guy that charged three sixty is one of your better plumbers and he's really fast. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, he's he charged by the hour. He's cutting your feet out from under you every call he runs. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, he's doing a five hundred and forty dollars. Like this customer that paid five forty of it for it was happy. Right. Yeah. So he's doing a five hundred and forty dollars service, but because you only charge time and the material, yeah, he's shorting you by only charging three sixty because he's fast. So That's you're right. taking one of your better employees and actually using it to cost the company money, and that's why you don't want to be on flat. Well, rate. and let's talk about the, just from the employees, exp- you know, perspective. That guy runs two more calls that day, makes the same amount of money, doesn't make any he's more money. hourly, right? You know, and if he was on flat rate pricing, right, and got the five forty. But did it in half the time that the other guy did. Yeah. Now he's able to run two more calls and get more money. Right. Like we, we talk yeah. about we've talked about this on the void and trade wins and all that. And I'm, I'm not going to drag all that up, but that's the reason why you've got to be that way. You know, back in the day, it was fine to charge hourly because there weren't these big description discrepancies. Right? right. There were plenty of plumbers. Everyone was pretty professional. Every but now in the day and age of there are just your aces. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of guys and not a lot in the middle. I mean, you just, you got to do it. Yeah. You have to be doing it. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, follow follow us on Facebook. On you know, follow, find us on Tradewinds on Facebook and follow us there. You'll see us drop the information as soon as the book's actually available for purchase through the website. So, yeah. And and full disclosure, most of these price books sell for like five grand, or, or some of them even sell up to ten thousand yeah. um, dollars. We've beta tested ours, and we've given it out to some people to get some feedback on it. And all of the feedback says that our book is better than the five and ten thousand dollar price books, and we're going to be selling ours for two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So uh, we're basically disrupting the market when it comes to that. So, yeah. and this is not a stupid sales pitch. Uh, no, void it's, podcast. We're just it's coming out. What what I'm saying People is, you don't need to spend five and ten grand it. for a price book. You can spend two fifty and get ours and get all of the info you need and more. Yeah, and for so, those of you that are. You know, like it's set up for plumbing right now. If you want to switch it over to electrical, if you want to switch it to HVAC, if you want to switch it to concrete, it doesn't matter. It's very easy to integrate. Yeah, it, especially once, in the lightweight version. Yeah, so. once you once you understand how it works, you can modify it and make it work for your business. Yeah. If you're a plumber, it's already going to work for your business. So this yeah. is literally the price book I use in my own company. Yes. So, um, okay, so back to the four levels of learning. Why this matters and why this is important <clears throat> is because. We need to be aware of where we're at in those four steps. And this changes with every subject we're learning, right? Um, with something new for me, I might be at level one. With plumbing, I'm at level four, right? Um, as I'm learning about, you know, something new that I've never done before, I'm level one. I don't know what I don't know, right? Yeah. Take, for instance, digital marketing. I don't know what I don't know. That's why I get screwed over in digital marketing, right? Yep. So... Yep. Um, you know, I'm quickly getting into, we, I know what I don't know. And now I know what I know. I was going to say, now you're in the second step. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere, I'm After somewhere around step lesson. two, right? Yeah. I know what I don't know. Yep. Um, and some, I know what I know on some of it. Right. So, um, but you know, the, every, every subject that we have or every opportunity we have to learn something, we need to identify where we're at in those levels. And the reason that's important to know where you're at is because that determines the level of value you can be providing, right? Yeah. For instance, if you're at level four, you're most likely undercharging for your services because you don't even value your own time at that point because it just comes so easily to you. Yeah. So um, that's not to say that like if you're newer into <clears throat> your service and you're at level two or three, that's not to say you can't be in business for yourself at level two or three. That's fine. But... The goal is to get to level four. The goal is to make it so automatic that you don't even know what you know. Like, yeah, you, you, it's just instinctual. Yeah. Right. And, and if you're in business <clears throat> and you get to the point where you've got eight guys underneath you and you're at that level where you are just basically subconsciously running that business all the time, that allows you to focus to keep growing that business. Right. Right? Because you're not weighed down by the day to day. You know everything. Right. You're on top of your game all the time. Right. And that's and you know, you can get to that level with one employee. You can get to that same level with two employees. You can get to that level with four employees. It's all at a different level. Well, and in, in like you know how, what I mean? so how like, this plays is like with plumbing, I'm level four. With leadership, I'm level two or three. Right? Yeah. Like, and that's not to say I'm at the top of my game in plumbing. Like, I'm constantly still learning new things and new ideas and new things, everything else. I'll argue with that. You are at the top of your game in plumbing. You're just, whatever new information comes out or changes or whatever, you're sucking that up to stay at that level. Yeah, I'm going right? to rapidly get to level four on that thing, yes, too. Yes, right? all the time. But, but with people, so like you could have a plumbing business and be at level four in plumbing, but be at level two with people. Yeah, and, and you need to be aware of that, right? You need to know where you're at with that because you need, like, it's good to know that I'm at level two with on something. I, you know, I know what I don't know, right? Because now the next thing is I got to get to level three. I got to get to where I know what I know. Yeah. Right. And then I got to get to level four, whereas I don't even know what I know, right? So, um, <clears throat> you know, identifying where you're at with that on every subject you're involved in is key. Yeah. And, and, and you, you said something there on every subject. Yes. It's, it's not business is not just the end all be all. It's, right. It's each individual task that you have to be after. Yeah. It's like the salesman, right? A salesman may know nothing about HVAC, but he's selling $200,000 a year. Right. At the company he's at. And right. he's at level one, maybe two, you know, yeah. and, but, and but he's would, at level four with, 
people. Yes, right. exactly. And so, and and let's be honest, if he knew, if he learned and got up to level three with heating and cooling, like knowing what jobs fit in that situation the best, his sales only get better. Right. Like he's even excelling at level four. Right. 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 And that's kind of the constant battle as a... Um, a really great service tech or installer or salesman or business owner or anyone, you're always trying. The people that are at the top are always striving to do better at everything that's involved with their job. Right. No matter what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Like just like trade wins, for example, like I am always calling Mitch. Hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? We just, I've just scheduled this entire event and I'm starting to, Think about the next one. Hey, what do you think would be better for the next one? Mm -hmm. Because people that are at the next level are always, they're hard on themselves because they want to be better. Right. Right. And you have to constantly be evaluating, constantly be moving forward, constantly be, be um, trying to get better because everyone else is on your coattails, right? right. They're, all, they're also doing the same thing. Yeah. So to stay at the top, you've got to stay motivated and try to be better in every category. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can quickly do a snapshot of like, okay, as a parent, what level am I at? As in in I don't I don't think you ever get to level four as a parent until your kids are off and grown. Like you're constantly learning. Even as your kids are teenagers, you're dude, still constantly learning. Dude, you and your brother are forty what are you guys, forty four and forty one? Yeah. Forty three and forty one? Your yep. parents still in at four. Right. That, that's, I, that's I, what I'm I saying. talk to them. I talk to them. Like yeah. we have conversations. Yeah. Like we're close. Yeah. And it, I, I'm not sure you ever get there. I mean, like yeah. you just said, I don't think you ever get there. You're constantly learning as a parent because constantly, yeah. like life is constantly changing, right? Right. But yeah. like in your in your craft, where are you at? What level are you at? In leadership, what level are you at? As a husband, what level are you at? Right. Dude, that shit goes up and down for me. Sometimes I'm a four. Sometimes I'm a one. <laughs> like, <laughs> it depends. Like what? Yeah. I right. just and, and, and that's a constant battle. Yeah. Like dealing with people and sales and relationships. That's a constant. Yeah. You know, social media changes the way people think. People as they get older change the way they think. Yeah. So you're constantly growing in that area, right? And right. They, that's why um, we've said this before. Um, you know, older people don't get the respect that they should get. Yeah. Like back in the day, like it was respect your elders and everyone went by that. Mm -hmm. You know, there was an old guy sitting on a bench. Hello, sir. Can I help you with anything? Right. Because people didn't understand. And it's just like, dude, do you know how much stuff that guy knows? Right. Do you understand how much that old lady's been through? Well, it she gets will to the beat your ass. Like, out of your it provides the truth to the saying that I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. Yeah. Like, that's level four. Yeah. I don't know what I know. Yeah. I've forgotten more. Yeah. Right? Five years before you die, you're you're at four. Right. You know everything. Right. You've seen it all, man. Right. Now, you just don't have the cognitive ability to apply it at that point. Man, you, you know it. I mean, right? I don't know. My grandma's 95. She's still push mowing her yard. Yeah. She is a bad bitch, man. man mine's, mine's 93, and she can't remember yeah, anybody. That's so sad. I know. It's so wild how that changes everything. I know. I talked to your dad the other day. He's... Like he puts on a brave face, but I oh yeah I know it's tearing him up. Yep, it's tearing him know? up to watch but his mom do that. You know what though? Credit to him and your brother that are over there. Yeah, his brother. I'm sorry, not yeah, your yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, his brother. They're over there. Two, three, two brothers. They, it, they all share duty. Is it three or four days a week? I don't know, but they're taking care of her. They're yeah. staying over at her house. Yeah, like that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Like, so I have mad respect for that. Yep. Not to get off topic, he, but he spends a lot of time over there. Yeah, he does. I go over there, but she doesn't know who I am. That's so. a, yeah, no, she's not taking pills for you. She, what's funny she is... She barely takes them for your dad. What's funny is she doesn't even know her daughter-in-laws. I know. So, uh, funny story about my grandma. We were over there for her, like, her 93rd birthday, and <clears throat> she's standing around there looking at the room, and there's, like, 25 people she, over there. She don't know nobody. And she's like, are all of you guys my kids? <laughs> and we're like, no, no, only these three over here, you know? Yeah. And, and then somebody was... Uh, <laughs> That's like, funny, dude. A, a couple of days before that, or maybe it was even right before the party, my aunt was brushing her hair before the party. And she, and this is her daughter-in-law, yeah. right? And, and my grandma's like... I sure wish my daughter-in-laws would have been this kind. My sons, they, they're, they're, their wives, they just aren't. You know? And she's like bashing her daughter-in-law to her daughter-in-law. She doesn't even know it. I know? can't wait till I get that old. I'm just going to pretend. Yeah. Like if I'm ever fully aware, I'm just going to be like, well, I guess I can say whatever the fuck I want yeah. now. 
Yeah. I hate all of you. you. You'll be talking to your brother and you'll be like, man, my brother was such an idiot. You know I mean? That's you and Brian. If you ever both live to be that old, that's going to be you fuckers. Oh my God. All right. Topic uh, two. Topic two is uh, Dave and I started arguing about this before the show. But it's a statement that I've heard recently. Barely. I was and, barely listening. Um, it, it rings true. Uh, as, as you, the more you think about it, you're like, damn it, this is dead on. Well, you're going so, to you're gonna try to prove it to me right here. So the I'm statement is, life, the spot. life is a series of interactions with people. And the outcome of those interactions determines where you'll go in life. And so, again, 99% of the time, right? Like... Like Austin was joking around about, well, 85. what about your experience with a bear? Like, what if he kills you? That's not a people, you know, like, okay, there's tragedy that happens that <laughs> takes you out of life. I get that. Oh, there's, there's more context. Okay. You mean, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Austin. but, but like <laughs> when it comes to people, yeah, your life is nothing more than interactions with people and, and how those interactions go de- depends on where you'll go in life. Right. So a perfect example of this is there was a TV show out for a while, and I think maybe you can still find it on Netflix. If you can't find it on Netflix, it's probably on YouTube. It's called Undercover Billionaire. And it's a guy named Glenn Stearns, and he's a billionaire, but he puts himself up to this challenge for national TV where he gets dropped off in the middle of a city with, like, $2,000. And the goal is to become a millionaire in 90 days. Okay? Okay. And he, like his overall objective is to say like most of the time we're cutting ourselves short and our vision's too small. Okay, kind of ties into what we were talking about last episode. But um, he basically I'm intrigued by this show. levels his way up. Like so so first thing he does he has no he has no housing. He has, he has two thousand dollars and the clothes he's wearing. Yes, is that what you're telling me? And and I think they gave him, <clears throat> if I remember right, it's been it's it's literally been like seven or eight years since I watched the show. I think they gave him like a two thousand dollar pickup truck, like some old beater jalopy. Just for Austin, use the word Did he, from the nineteen no, fifties. Old beater jalopy pickup you're truck. You're completely intrigued. I, I'm completely intrigued. Does is it? They drop him off like, like New York City or like a just a podium um, town. I I if I recall, I think it was Detroit. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So insult to injury, Detroit. His, his first mo, like his first mode of operation, was I can't even worry about becoming a millionaire until I cover ninety days. The goal is to become a millionaire in ninety days. So his first mo is I got to cover ninety days worth of housing and food, because if I'm fighting for money for food, I can't be worrying about being a millionaire. Yeah. So. I need to raise enough money to cover housing and food for 90 days and or get creative, right? Maybe it's not even raising money. Maybe it's working a deal to get housing or food for 90 days, right? So he does that. And then, um, and then he moves on to, like, basically his pathway to do it was through opening a barbecue restaurant. And so... With $2,000? $2,000 and interactions with people. Did he have credit? No. Did they loan him money to do the, open no. the restaurant? How no. did he open the restaurant? Man, I'm fucking intrigued. You, you right got to watch the show. But basically, <laughs> I won't prove it. But you got to watch the show. <laughs> yeah. People wonder why I want to choke him. <laughs> like in the one on ones we have with the guys from Trade Winds, they're like, "No, dude, I get it. Like yeah. they understand. It. Like, yeah. yeah, I get it. Why you want to choke him? But but what I'm saying is, <clears throat> he has interactions with people, and he's very charismatic, and he makes promises <clears throat> to people. And he instills trust that he's going to take care of them. And essentially, he gets this entire team of people that are all willing to work for Skin in the Game to build this restaurant. Okay? He gets like an event planner. He gets a chef and all this shit. And they right? say, I want a percentage. They, like... Is that what he does? It's Yes, but it's not even that formal. It's not even like, I'm going to write a contract with you and you get X percent. It's like, I'll, I'll take care. Like, the relationship is based on the interaction with people, and it's like, I'm going to take care of you. I call TV, We're all going to be... I call TV scam. No. No, it's legit. And so basically what happens is he ends up succeeding in building the restaurant, and then he gifts it. He, he gifts ownership of the restaurant to everybody that helped him. I call TV, okay? TV bullshit. So it's not like like when you watch the show he drops nuggets in there like you wouldn't believe like like literally like the first most important nugget is i can't worry about becoming a millionaire unless i'm 
you know, fighting for food and lodging for 90 days. Yeah. So I got to get that completely under my belt. Well, that that applies to everyday life. If I'm fighting to pay my mortgage every day, I'm never going to grow a million dollar business. How does he buy the food to start the restaurant? He's only got 2000 bucks. It's he, he levels up. Uh, okay. It's it's not like he only <laughs> has 2000, right? He he like a, another way he got money was he went and got permission to rummage through a lot. And the guy said, "Yeah, take whatever." Right? The guy's like wanting to throw away everything on the lot. Well, he finds these four big tires and he puts them up for sale. And he ends up selling these like ag tires for two grand. Well, now he's got a whole nother two grand and he didn't have, he didn't have any cost in it. So he's, he's like not letting any deal or opportunity pass by to make money and, and everything else. That's like the Gary Vaynerchuk thing where he goes on those garage sales. Yes. Yeah. Those are really fun to watch. Well, it, He'll be walking away and then someone will get mad and be like, please don't like, like, can you at least have an instant to walk away before you, before I realize how much money I gave well, you and, for that Lego and, set? So <laughs> the overriding thing, it's, like a lot of people get confused when Gary Vee does that. Mm. It's not the quick fifty dollars you made on the garage sale. It's mm. not the thing that you identified an object, you bought it for cheap, and then sell it on eBay for fifty dollars profit. It's not that. Mm. It's the ability to go after it, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's so many people are acting like, well, I wish I could find a deal. Like we just talked about this last episode. Mm -hmm. I wish I could find a deal like that. You aren't fucking looking. How many garage, like the guy who's yeah. like, I wish I could find a garage sale like that, hasn't set foot in a garage sale well, in five and you years. Got, and you got to go to 500. You got to go to some, right? Yeah, you got to go to 500. Right. We need a law of averages horn that we honk because that comes up in like every single. Well, it's, it's, not even, it's not even law of averages because law of averages says I'll take mediocre deals at mediocre levels of garage sales, right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is like Gary Vee is going to walk into a garage sale and he like where you would say, ah, oh, there's really nothing here. He's going to find something there. Or he right? goes in there and he says, I'll take the whole, I'll take it all for 200 bucks. Right. And then goes and flips it. I, I, I'm, I've never seen the show. I'm just right. saying that's like something you can do. And then you can literally, uh, mm. you know, if you go do that at four garage sales. Right. And then mm. have a huge online monthly sale. Right. Then you could make profit from that. It's well, not a lot of profit, but. Like this series of interactions and, and the outcome of those interactions determines where you go. This was literally how I built my business. I left no customer unturned. How many sales guys go into a house and they have this like false floor? I'm not willing to work. I'm not willing to do a sale here unless I make at least this much money. I was not that way. I was, I was selling a customer any amount of work that they were willing to buy. And if that was $100 in work, I was selling them $100 in work. And if that was $10,000 in work, I was selling them $10,000 in work, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, we have a lot of people that go into a sales opportunity, and they're like, it's not even worth my time unless I can sell them $2,000 in work. Well, yeah. well, guess what? You just carved yourself out of a big mm. portion of customers. Yeah. So I would dial down the services yeah. to do whatever it took to make a happy customer because I built my business mm. on referrals and I can't get a referral from you unless I make you a customer first and then a happy customer after that, yeah. right? Well, it's pretty hard to make somebody a happy customer when I, I turned my nose up at you only willing, wanting to spend so much money. Yeah. Right? That is, and, and, and man, back like 10 years, well, 10, 15 years ago when like things were blowing and going, man, that was the, that was the MO mm. of all salesmen. Right. What? Like I have a minimum that I'm willing yes. to work. With? Yeah. And, and especially not even worth like, it for me to do. Yeah. That. Like new construction and stuff like that. They were all just like, nope. Right. We're, nope. 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 And well, now and it's start. People are starting to finally realize, oh, man, we're all about to be starving to death. Yeah. Like so mm. like that's kind of the the change now. But you if you were ahead of that curve, you're already successful. Right. 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 Well, in life, there's only four things we can control. We can control our thoughts, we can control our feelings, we can control our actions, and we can control how we communicate to other people. There is nothing more we can control in life. Say that again. We can control our thoughts. That's not true. Go well, ahead. On to the next one. Sometimes your thoughts get the best of you, but yes. we are still in control of our thoughts. That's okay? Not, well, he's talking about like, the second one. like there's things that are fleeting thoughts, like, oh, but then you have your, your mind that's like, no, that's well, like, like what I... Th what, when you say that, like, I have thoughts all the time that I'm like, oh, fuck. They're just fleeting thoughts. But, yeah, you, they are fleeting. And you do have control as in you say, okay, no, that's what are you doing, dude? Well, like, you do that, but you don't actually control the thoughts that come into your head. You have control over the thoughts that you have. Yes. 
Yeah. If you and choose to ent- entertain a fleeting thought, then that's your control. Well, and, yes. And if you're we, still in control, yes. You can have a thought about a worst case scenario, but it's still your conscious choice. Do you allow that to manifest into a fear? That's what I mean. Or do you allow that to be something that you navigate around? That's right. right. That's what I mean. So uh, feelings, we control our feelings. Now, that doesn't mean that there are some days where we're naturally more happy or more sad than other days. However, we are in control of the conditions that create our feelings. If I'm around five losers every day that are constantly talking about negative shit, then guess what? My feelings are going to be pretty negative, but it's because I'm in control of who I'm around, right? If I'm in control of who I'm around, I'm going to put myself in front of positive people that are constantly talking about positive things and looking for the bright side. And then guess what? My thoughts tend to be and my feelings tend to be is they tend to be more positive and more happy. Yes. And right? that is like, that's like the preemptive strike, right? Yeah. Like, so, and I'm just going to say this. I've said this a hundred times on the show. I'm super emotional. Like yeah. my feelings are on my sleeve all the time. Right. Like, and that is what drives me and makes me the way I am. That's why I can be like, if I, um, if I want to be, <clears throat> super charismatic and suck up a room, I can do it. Right. If I want to be super down and drag every motherfucker down with me, I can do it. Yep. But that's just how I am. But what you're saying is, and I agree with this 100%, your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of um, personal dedication, personal um, reflection, therapy sometimes to be able to separate your mind from your feelings. Yep. Especially for people like me that are like, okay, I'm just, I have got to get control of this. And it's a difficult thing for people to do. Like for you, it's not that difficult, right? Like they don't, they don't interact. I've been in there. You have. I, I mean, keep in mind, I've been on antidepressants. I've been in a part where I, I could not get happy, right? We'll get, Welcome to my world where like one hour I'm happy and the next hour I want to murder everyone in the store. Right. Like in, but the, the difference is, um, from psychopaths to people that are just emotional, but can control it is the way that they think about those things and, uh, the strength of their mind to overcome them. Right. Right. And so I think I, I agree with you a hundred percent on that. I right. just, you have to be able to, if you are an emotional person, and you're going to be a business owner or you're going to be a manager or whatever, you have to be able to step aside and um, separate your mind and what you should be doing from the emotions that you're having at any given moment. Right. And the right. main reason why is because the very next one is actions. Right. You're in control of your actions, yeah. right? And action is the first thing after thought. Right. It's emo- so, it, sh- it should go emotion, thought, action. What happens a lot of the time is it's emotion, action, and well, then thought afterwards, oh, I should have done this. Well, so a lot of... So I'll, I'll, I go the other way with it. Your thoughts turn into your feelings. Your feelings turn into your actions, and your actions turn into how you communicate. That's no, why I put them in that order. My emotions is the first thing out. Like so, it's the what drives me the most. Like the emotion that I have at that moment, right, is what the first thing in. But if my mind doesn't take over, then my action is the wrong action. Right, right, right. So like a lot of times though, your feelings are determined by. Your, your thoughts over a long period of time. If you have a lot of negative thoughts, then yeah. you're going to have some pretty sad feelings. That can be, yeah. And so then when it comes time to act, you might act in an improper way. Yes. But it's built on a string of negative thoughts and then it can negative be. feelings, right? It can be. So that's why it starts with thoughts. Um, and then finally, it ends with how you communicate to others. So let's say you're a hot-headed person. If you can kill if, them all, dog. If you can manage <laughs> the hot headedness and still communicate properly, you're okay, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're letting your hot headedness come out through your communication, well, now you're just going to burn every bridge of everybody around you because you can't communicate very Flame well. Flame on, right? Bitch. Right. <laughs> Flame on. So, um, I I had posted a while ago on Facebook that you know, if, if for people that are worrying worried about being judged or judging yourself. Judge yourself on your actions, because our actions are the most accurate determination of who we are. We all have some pretty pretty bad thoughts from time to time, but our actions are the true judge of our character. I will say that's that's well said because a lot of people judge themselves on the feelings exactly and thoughts that they have, exactly. and they're like, "Oh, I'm a bad person because I thought that." Right. But did you act on it? Right. No, your mind controlled your emotions. Right. And you made the right decision. Right. And that's 
that's a hard thing for a lot of people to get over. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so in that position, judge yourself on your actions. Look over the last year and look at your actions. And if you're proud of them, you should be proud of yourself. Right. And if you're not proud of them, then you should recognize that, that that's an area where you need some work. Well, if, if you're not proud of them, you do recognize because if you, if you, if you weren't proud of them or let me, let me rephrase that. If you were proud of the bad actions you took, you did not recognize that you were not doing the right thing. Right. Right. Well, if you're proud of bad actions, if you're proud of owning somebody, if you're proud of chewing somebody out, right? If you're proud of... It's like you're talking about me when I was 25. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, if you're proud of winning that road rage incident, like, that's a problem, right? You need need some help there. Well, yeah, because you're just continuing down a... I don't want to say bad path, but a non-successful path for right. sure. Like right. you're not a leader. Like right? here, I'll, I'll give you a prime. This was a, this was one of the most eye opening moments in my life. And Mitch this, used to get into a lot of road rage. I don't know if that's where this is going. It but is. When he was like in his twenties, like he would dude, this mother. I mean, he would be like, yep. like, dude, Mitch, you're going to get shot, bro. So you don't carry a gun. You're going to get shot. This was seven or eight years ago. Oh, this uh, is recent. This was recent Ooh, I like, enough. I like where this uh, is going. I'll, I'll say this. I was working at a place that that caused me to go on antidepressants. Okay, like I was at the, I was at the emotional low point of my life at this moment. I right? just chew them like Tic Tacs. And so, um, I was driving down the road. Somebody cut me off. I had my kid in the car too. Um, Which one? Somebody. Mm-hmm. I think it was Grant. This, this is just for one. me. Hey, you know what? We may have learned something about Grant today. I don't know. Maybe. 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 So uh, this guy cuts me off. and You on the highway? I'm trying to get a mental no, picture here. We're on Adam's Dairy. Oh, shit. Okay. And I so, like where this is going. We're slow. Yeah, you can hear what like, they're saying. We're like eight <laughs> blocks from my house, right? And so, um, you know, I do what a lot of people do. You fly by them. You mean mug them. You kind of do the fakes. Like like the whole road rage incident of like, yeah. I'm just going to pump fake you and see what happens. And it's kind of built on retaliation. I just hold my right? finger out the window like this. I just, so every time. This, you know. I'm a bad person too. He, he <laughs> ends up in front of me at a red light. And so I get out of my car. Oh, shit. Oh. We're, going, I, we're going dark. I like and, it. And I walk up to his car. And he rolls the window down as I'm walking up. And he's got one hand on the wheel. And he's got one hand down to his side. And um, he won't even look at me. He's looking straight ahead. And he says, for your safety, you need to get back in the car. And I'm like chewing him out. I, I, like he said it, but I didn't even comprehend it, right? Yeah. And so I'm like chewing him out. And are you in a motherfucking hurry? You know, I'm just like, blah, 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 like typical road rage yeah. bullshit, right? Like, how dare you cut me off? You know? Yeah. Meanwhile, if I would have just left it as where he cut me off, he'd have been on his way. I'd have been on my way and it would have been done, right? Leave mm-hmm. it in the past. Yeah. And, but... You know, this this is the last time where I lost my like one of the last times where I've lost my temper. Lost your cool. And so, you know, I'm I'm just blah, you know, just cussing him out, just doing the typical road rage thing. And then I happen to look down at his left hand and he's holding a pistol. Yeah. And, you know, he's feeling threatened. He's he's being responsible about it. Like he's not pointing it at me. He's not antagonizing me. Yeah. He's he's literally like if this goes any further, I'm gonna, I might have to use this, right? Yeah. And so I see that, and I like stop mid. I don't even remember what I was saying. I stop mid sentence, and I just turn and walk back to the car, not out of fear, not at, like I wasn't afraid he was going to shoot me because he never pointed it at me yeah. or anything like that. It was literally like, I am an absolute idiot. Like, I should have just left this thing in the past. Like maybe the guy didn't even see me. Like who knows, right? Yeah. He didn't hit me. Like. Yeah. Sometimes shit just hat like who knows. I walk straight back to the car and I started apologizing profusely to my son. Like I'm sorry you had to see this. I don't know what came over me. Don't ever do that. You know, all like I I was just like who the hell was I right? It was like one of my least proud moments in a long ass time. Were, I'm going to ask you a personal question. Were you on that Lexapro at the time? Uh probably. Yeah. yeah. That stuff has like it will make you rage. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's probably what that was. This the, it was those like meds, like one little thing will set you off and you're like you like lose your mind. I vividly remember the feeling because I never want to feel like that again. 
Like everything was cool. Like I'm driving down the road with my son. Yeah, it's and instantaneous. Then, and it's then he cuts boom. me off. The and then all of a sudden off. this rush of heat yeah. goes through my face. Yeah. And it was kind of like me, it's myself, the, and Irene. It's those right? meds, dude. It's almost it like a dual meds. personality thing yeah. where I flipped mm-hmm. into the psychotic guy for a second. Yeah. But then the green goblin. And th- then seeing him, you know, it, like I mean, I'm assuming he's a lawful gun owner. He was behaving lawfully, right? Yeah. Like seeing that, it just instantly clicked to me like Holy shit! Yeah, what the hell am I even doing yeah. right here? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I so. just, I have, I don't want to get into like a whole thing. I've had a gun pulled on me a few times. Yeah, and you're, you handled it extremely well. I looked at the guy in the face and told him he was a chicken shit for pulling a gun. I was like, right. I was like, you're a fucking chicken shit. Well, and you, so is that all you got? And this and guy, then, uh, like, I literally like, and I still think about this. This was, this was. 18 years ago, I literally think to myself, you could have died. Yeah. It, like, I think about it all the time. I looked him in the eye, and I was like, you're a fucking chicken shit. Is that all you've got? Like, I, I have no gun. Right. You're a fucking chicken shit. And it's, I just turned around and left. I was like, and I think about it all the time. That guy could have just fucking shot me right there. I'd have been dead. It's, it's, been almost as, dead. it's almost as if life is a series of interactions with people, and the outcome of those interactions determines where you go. No, the, and you have some control. You have fifty percent control over the outcome of those interactions. The interaction, that guy's interaction, saved you, not anything that you did. Well, I chose to go up to the car, right? The outcome, the very, the ending was controlled by him, not by you. Correct, but <clears throat> because he could have literally just like turned and shot you. He could have. Right? I mean, but he wouldn't have had that opportunity had I not chose to walk up to his car in a heat of anger. Right? True, and so true. But every moment, this is like the, um, this is like the premeditation murder one thing, like how long in between decisions? Yeah, is it premeditated? It's the same thing, but all boils down to I'm the one who chose to push the issue. Yeah, well, that's where I'm going with that. Is it, it's still your first decision? Is that I will say like what we were talking about before the show. Um, like the original um, decision you made to get out was not an interaction with someone. I mean, it was because he cut you off, but the original interaction is with yourself. Correct. Like, Correct. So like those of us with very, like that are emotional and have very strong inner monologues, you know, and things like that and are irrational at a lot of times, most of our decisions and most of the things that are that happen in our lives are because of things we've either told ourselves mm-hmm. that we're talking about or things we've thought or whatever. Now that's an interaction with a person, but no, it's not. Right. Like that's you know, those are decisions you make. Right. Well, let me give you let me give you another example where this plays out. Um We've we've started this big giant contract we're doing where we're putting some pumps in people's basements and the government's paying for it. Okay. Um, well, basically, oh, the government agencies go tax in, dollars hard at work. Well, it saves the sewer system. I don't give up. <laughs> Stop taking so, my money. Um, well, don't worry. It's happening over in Kansas. Doesn't matter. So, That's not the point, Mitch. Uh, um, um, basically, so the program goes out and finds these reasons to put in sump pumps. And then they bring in the plumbers to actually do the work because the government agencies can't work on private property. So they have to work through licensed plumbers. Okay. Yeah. And so they ran into, there's several plumbers in this program. They ran into an incredibly difficult customer. So they handpicked this customer for us. And they, they specifically told me, like, this customer is very non-trusting, and this customer is very difficult, and you guys handle customers better than anybody else, so we handpicked this one for you. Sorry, but... Good luck. It is what, yeah, like, kind of like, sorry, <laughs> but luck. not sorry, right? Sorry, not sorry, good luck. Well, I had like they didn't have any warning the first time they met her. And so they were caught off guard and she's being super obtuse and very difficult and everything else. I had the warning from them. And so I'm actually able to calculate my interactions with her and yeah. enforce a certain outcome, right? So okay, they've already told me she doesn't she's very difficult and she's lacking of trust. So I need to create some miniature scenarios while I'm in the home so she trusts me. And so when that starts at interaction number one. Yes. Right? right, and so so I was making sure along the process that I was doing things to let her build trust in me, and doing other things to let her build trust in me. And by the end of the time, we secured the job. That this job is actually like 
twice as large as normal jobs. And we got it specifically because I was very intentional with my interactions with her, right? So the outcomes would come a certain way. And thankfully, I had the heads up that she's very difficult, right? Because if I would have been blindsided by it, then yeah. I, I may not have been able to choose those ki kinds of interactions. But, you know, ultimately, every interaction you have with somebody is going to, it's like the butterfly effect. You yeah, it is the butterfly effect. That, that lady you're passing in the grocery store that drops the can on the floor and it spills everywhere. If you laugh at her, she may have been a key instrumental part of a future decision that's going to have a big impact on you. Or you could go to the doctor's office and she's the one handling your billing. Right. Exactly. Or she could be the doctor. Right. You know, you just, you never know. Right. So, uh, have you heard the story about the young man that was standing in the? Uh, you don't want her to check you for a hernia after you laughed at her. Had, so, so in there's aisle three. There's a young man. He's standing in the pharmacy and he's trying to pick what condoms he needs. He's never had to buy condoms before, but he's got this hot girlfriend, and he thinks no. that this weekend's <laughs> going to be the weekend. No, right? I've never heard this. So he's standing there and he's he's kind of debating things, and the pharmacist actually sees him, and so he walks up to the. The guy, and he's like, can I help you? And the kid's like, I don't really know what I need, you know, and the pharmacist is kind of mildly happy that he's at least buying condoms, right? So the pharmacist helps him, makes the transaction, and goes on, right? Well, two days later, the guy goes over to this girl's house, and he's having dinner with the girl. And the father says, you know, can we bow our heads in prayer? And the son said, or the, the boyfriend says, I'd like to lead the prayer. And he leads this magnificent prayer. And the, the, the prayer gets over, and the girlfriend says, I had no clue you were so religious. And the, the boyfriend says, I had no clue your dad was a pharmacist. <laughs> 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 so, a series of interactions, right? Oh, like, my He's like, the longer God. I pray, the, 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 the oh more time I can put off that interaction. <laughs> so fucked up. It's funny, though. But it's real. <laughs> like, like he could have been like, like, he could have been standing in that pharmacy and the pharmacist been like, can I help you? Oh, yeah, I got this bitch on leash and I'm just going to fuck this week. Like, he could have been that way, well, right? that's a dark part of you. <laughs> right, right, right. But, but, but what I'm saying, like, he could have been yeah. that guy. Yeah. But instead, he was actually mildly responsible with it, right? Now, Granted, does the dad it's still, still a fucked up joke? Yeah. Right, right. It's still yeah. fucked up and everything else. First but off, like, the guy, the kid comes to my house. And I look at him and I go, "Dude, I'll fucking murder yeah. you." Like, empty your pockets, like, because <laughs> I know what's in them. Yeah, I have a kill room in my basement. <laughs> hey, do you want to see something? Like, uh, yeah, but yeah, I get it. I just, uh, oh man, that's dark. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. All right, last topic. What do you want to talk about? Coaching. Coaching. You gonna coach me? We coach each other all the time. Ah, uh, well said, sir. Right? Well said, sir. All right, so you've newly started your company and you're trying to pinch pennies. However, you don't realize the biggest thing that's hurting you right now is not gathering all of your information into one spot and making it super efficient for you to use. So the answer is Field Pulse. It gets you off of paper tickets. It gets you off of all of that crazy office work at the end of the day and reconciling all that stuff. And it lets you organize everything with ease. It puts it all into the computer. It actually puts it all into the cloud. So it's not even putting it on your computer. And it lets you organize your customers. It lets you organize all of your service calls. Heck, it'll even route you to your service call. And the best part is, even after all of that, you'll probably realize about a 100% growth in your business just in the first year of using Field Pulse. So if you'd like to check out Field Pulse and see what great looks like, click on the link in the description of this show. Coaching is a part of life. Uh, we all need it. Whether we're employees, whether we're employers, um, whether Damn we're right, we friends, do. right? We mm -hmm. all need coaching. Yep. Um, we need our friend to call us and say, Hey dude, what are you doing out so late? Like what, are, what are you doing? Right. Like that. I left you alone that night. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> well, your phone was off. I knew it wouldn't do any good anyway. Yeah. But, um, okay. yes, but, but you, we all need help and we all need coaching. We, we all need it from time to time. One of the things that we have to get around the idea of is feedback is a gift. If somebody is willing to take the time out of their day to give you feedback, that's a major, major plus. That's a major positive it's, sign. Especially if it's constructive right. feedback. And here's why. That feedback didn't just come on a whim. That feedback was 
prepared over past experiences that was calculated. They planned a conversation. They 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 had it all written out, right? Yeah, or or you did something that moved them enough to make the effort right. to help you or um, guide you in the right direction, right? right. And w- which Pe- which is a, a plus or a minus, right? Right. Either Pe- way, people that don't care about you tell you to like fuck off, right? No, and they just don't do anything. They're they're neutral. Yeah, they, well, it just or, rolls or they're on neutral. To, it just right? rolls on to the and next. That's probably thing. even worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you didn't stir an emotion in someone where they're willing to, you know, give you constructive criticism. Right. Like right. that's eh. Right. And so that's where feedback is really, really important. And I say feedback, right? We're not talking about bitching. We're not talking about griping. Like no, we're talking feedback about cons- comes with the constructive the, criticism. Yeah. We're, it comes with the print. Like feedback is constructive. Yes. Right. It's, it's not griping and complaining about somebody. It's constructive. That is feedback. If it's if it's griping and complaining, that ain't feedback, right? So at the moment somebody's wanting to give somebody feedback, the person receiving that feedback should actually be grateful. Now it's a, it's an inverse thing. Like it, it feels really awkward to be grateful when you're getting feedback. However, years later you're gonna look back on that and you're gonna say, "Damn, I'm glad that guy gave me feedback." Prime example for me. I've talked about it before on the show. Um, I have a very analytical mind. So you present a problem to me and I'm immediately going to identify the big hurdles with that problem. Okay. Well, as a team leader in the past, I was immediately recognizing those hurdles and then communicating the hurdles to my team. All right, guys, we got to watch out about this. This might sneak up and bite us in the ass. We got to watch out about this. And the last thing we want to have happen is this. So don't let that happen. Right. Yeah. My mentor at the which, time. Which creates stress and anxiety, right? Exactly. Yeah. So on my, your team. my mentor at the time said, Hey, Mitch, you're great at recognizing those hurdles, but stop giving them to your team. You're scaring the shit out of your team. And most of those hurdles never actually come true. Yeah. So now you're freaking your team out about something that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So he says, here's the better way to handle it. Recognize those hurdles and keep them to yourself, right? Coach the team on what it's going to take to get over the hurdles without telling them what the hurdles are. And then when the hurdles show up, because some of them will, when the hurdles show up, you already have the solution in your head, so you actually look like a better leader for already knowing what to do. Yeah, okay? when, they, when they call, you have the answer, right? At the time he was giving me that feedback, I thought, this motherfucker hates me. <laughs> like, here I am breaking my back for the company. <laughs> this motherfucker hates right. me. Right, no, I seriously did. <laughs> like, I can remember going home and complaining to my wife about it. I'm like, this guy freaking hates me. Like, here I am breaking my back for the team, identifying all these hurdles, and he's telling me to stop, Right. Now, years <laughs> later, now I'm able to say that was some of the best advice I've ever been given. You know, right? you know, we talk about it a lot on the show. Like Mitch and I are both in our 40s. You don't learn and recognize those things till you're older, right? Right. So if <clears throat> like what we talk about on the show and you know the advice that we're giving you guys and the just the wisdom and stuff, if you can see that stuff earlier in your career, like it was bad that Mitch didn't see that earlier, right? But if you're 30 and can see that, Dude, you're eight steps ahead of the game. Right. Like, so what we're talking about here is being able to accept that coaching, accept that criticism, you know, accept those um, changes that need to be made because they're going to make you a better person. Right. um, Individually, as a leader, as a business owner, all those things. And if you can do that earlier, like, what's the whole point of the Void podcast? I'm asking you a question. Is, is to mentor people to to it's, allow them to see the results of something that they don't yet think they're capable of. It It is for us to share our knowledge and wisdom that we wish we would have gotten yes. when we were 25 and 30. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why we, that's the whole point of the fucking show, right? Is right. to say, hey, this is, this, these are things you need to look out for. This is a huge thing you need to look out for when you're 25 and 30. Right. Inst- instead of being 28 years old and your boss come in and maybe he's got just a touch of an attitude or whatever and telling you what you need to do to be a better manager, he's probably right. Right. And so right. like what I would do at that time, at 28, I was a manager. There were seven guys under me doing rough ends at right. the time, okay? And I would blow the guy off and say, fuck you. I'm not doing that. We're doing it my fucking way. Right. Maybe if I would have listened, 
or maybe I would have taken that advice and then shared it with those guys, I would have been further along in my management experience than I was. Right. But I didn't do that. Right. Right. And I wish I would have known that at the time, just like you're saying, hey, now I look back and I realize, oh, that guy was way smarter than me. Right. Maybe I should have been open to those criticisms or open to the coaching right. that he was getting me, even though I didn't realize that's what I was getting at the time. And here's why we're so resistant to it is because we let our pride get in the way and we take it too personally. Yeah, we're full and, of testosterone and piss and vinegar, and we don't know because we're go getters and we work construction and we're badasses. Right, and that's what we've, you know, that's what we've grown up on. Right. That's why. Right, and it's hard to set that stuff aside and realize, you know what? I'm maybe I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Right, right. So, like, a coach, you know, we, we coach people in trade wins, and like I coach my team members, right? Um. When I'm looking at that role as being a coach, I'm not coaching the person on who they are today. I'm coaching the person on who I see they will become in the future, right? Yeah. If I'm coaching you on who you are today, I'm kind of living in the past, and I'm, I'm allowing you to live in your past, right? Yeah, And so 100%. you're coaching the person on who they can become. Because if you're not, if as a coach, if you're not living in the future on where they can become, you're not really a coach. You're like, they're like paying you for Monday morning quarterbacking. <laughs> I would have done it differently. Well, no shit. They already know that, right? <laughs> I haven't thought about that, but yeah, that's, but, that's true. But like, you you have to like coaching anybody starts with recognizing what their potential is, and then. <clears throat> having conversations intentionally so that the person can get to that potential. Right. Yeah. And, and it comes without bias and it comes with total selflessness, selflessness. Like in other words, it, like if I'm coaching an employee, I'm not coaching an employee. So they make more sales for me so that I can make more money. I'm coaching an employee so that they can make more sales for themselves so that they can make more money. Well, that's how you have to look at it. Well, if you're That's looking, how you should be looking exactly. At it. If you're looking at it from the my perspective, like the the me perspective, yeah, then you're not coaching. You're manipulating. Yes, right. If I'm <laughs> looking like the the difference between a coach and a manipulator is a coach has their best interest at heart, and a manipulator manipulator has their own best interest at heart. Yeah, a coach has their the, the players, the, the, the best players, interest. or or yeah. the the other person's the best, best interest at heart. Right. The best the best coaches. In the NFL, the NBA, whatever, they are always, you, you know this, they are always wanting their players to be the best. Exactly. And you can, and when you hear them, you know, other than maybe Bill Belichick, because he's kind of a douche, but like, <laughs> you can a damn hear, good coach. he is a good coach, but you can hear it in their voices. And yeah. then you hear it when you talk to the players, they say, oh, yeah, coach was always saying, hey, look. Yeah. If you do this and you are great and you can't play here, you're going to make a ton of money. Yeah. I want you to make They're looking out for them because they know that's the only way to really grow a team. Go go look at Nick Saban. Yeah. Like you won't find a player out there that has a bad word to say about Nick Saban. No. They're always like, "Hey, he comes to him and says, "Hey, look, if you do this and do this and do that, you'll make it in the NFL." Right. We're going to win here and then you're all going to go to the NFL. Right. That's what's going to happen. Right. So same thing as a as a manager or team leader. Right. So, and so construction. a coach sees a version of you that you don't yet see in yourself. A coach has the ability to take some some cues from your personality and see who you can become because they're not clouded down with your bad thoughts and your bad history. Yeah. And everything that's telling you your potential is nowhere near what it actually is, right? A coach can actually see your potential because they're on the outside looking in, right? Yeah. So because of that, when a coach offers you feedback, it's the, it's the weirdest position in the world to be in. But you need to approach it from the standpoint of being appreciative of the feedback. And what brought this whole topic up is one of the people that's speaking at Tradewinds, uh, Amy Ball. She recently posted, like, she's basically a, a business coach. And so... Um, and, and she's coached like Fortune 500 companies and all this stuff, right? People pay her to come in there and tear their business apart and tell them where they're fucking up. 
I think that's why you hire a coach, right? Man, that's my goal. I want to be Amy so bad. <laughs> oh my god. So, um, she I she can't recently wait to talk to her. She recently <laughs> posted on Facebook about one of her clients got like all super pissed off and took it all personally. And it's like, dude, that's the wrong attitude to have. Like, you literally hired the coach to, to help you out. Yeah. Like, did you, what you, you <clears> didn't <throat> hire him to come in and tell you, like, oh, you're doing perfect. That's why right? you're 20 million this, in debt because you're so fucking great. What, what was it? Caesar actually had, pe- like, he had people on staff just to give him affirmations 24 7. First off, if I, I make it, I'm doing that. I mean, I'm hiring like th- I three can't, people. I can't remember. This was like leading up to the fall of Rome. But I'm gonna hire Tom I remember, Cruise. I'm gonna hire Tom Cruise to follow follow me around. Tell me I'm a badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like like you're not hiring a coach to be a cheerleader for your business. You're hiring a coach to tell you you're doing this wrong. You're doing this right. But if you fix this, it's gonna magnify this yeah. way and propel you here. You're, you're, when you hire coaches like that, business coaches, you're hiring them to tell you your faults imagine and they're trying to tell you the good things you're good at okay look you're good at these five things these five things got to change yeah and if these five things change and you keep these five things the same you're gonna be badass right that's so, why you're paying them the money imagine imagine like patrick mahomes's athletic trainer imagine if he came in and was like yeah you're slacking in this area and patrick mahomes says the fuck i am fuck you have you have you watched a quarterback on netflix yeah i have dude it's good as shit. yeah it's really good it's right? so fucking good and imagine if pat mahomes like took pride like got prideful about with his coaches yeah you know recommendations and was like screw you no no yeah. that's why you hired him you hired him to yeah. tell you where you're failing and yeah. tell you where you're slacking yeah so listen to them yeah. they're the expert yeah do it if you're gonna hire them and pay the money, right? Do what they say. Listen if you, to if them. you have vetted them, right, and know that they're the best, you're paying them for a reason, right? Like, and, and it's you know what impresses me off topic again about Pat Mahomes is how humble he is for how young he is. Mm-hmm. Like for the, for his trainer to come in and go, no, this is what we're doing, and then he just does it. It's because like, it's it's very I. He, I think he does it because he had good parents. Well, so he had good parents, right? With the dad in the MLB, he had the his dad had the ability to instill in Patrick that you need high level people coaching you through life. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that like as as I'm a part of Apex, God, I'm gonna have to get some coaches. It, Fuck. As as I'm a part of Apex, the no most coaches. successful I'll people. Coach you. <laughs> the most successful people in Apex have the most coaches. Yeah. And that's not by happenstance. That's not like, oh, they got successful and then got the coaches. Yeah. Like, they got them as they could afford them, for sure. But, like, I have a financial coach, right? I've got a guy who, like, his literal job description is to minimize my relationship with Uncle Sam. Is yeah. to set my finances up in a way to where I am legally paying as little taxes as possible while retaining as much capital in the business yeah. so that I can grow the business and help our employees at the maximum level I can. That's funny. That's exactly what I ta- we talked about the other day. Remember when I called you and I said, hey, at the end of the year, we might have to do this. Right. You know? Right. But, but yeah, that's just... Like, I can't... I want to think of the right way to say this. Like, I never would have thought that me and Mitch doing this podcast and then it turning into trade wins, like it would take off and be like a whole nother genre for me to work in. Right? Right. So like, Mitch is almost a coach to me. In well, the, we're a coach to each other. In that sense. Like, right. I've, I've learned so much in the last year and a half and am grateful for it. Didn't even realize the coaching was going on. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like, man, you just turn around one day and you're like, man, I'm sucking up a lot of stuff. Right. Like, Oh, we're doing this now. Oh, we're doing this now. Oh, that's great. And at the time, like, like at the time I thought, well, there's nothing else I'm going to learn. I'm going to go on this path and this is going to be my path. Right. And then all of a sudden you get a coach in your life and you're like, Oh shit. Right. There's this whole other opportunity I could be having over here. Didn't even know it existed. Right. 
But the only reason I got there is because I was listening to someone else and saying, you know what? They might, they might be right about that. Right. That might work. Right. That might be a good idea. But if you're not open to that and you're not willing to accept the fact that you're not 100% the end-all, be-all of the whole world and everything, it's not going to happen. Right. Because you're not going to be able to take those chances or learn those new things. And, and I'm not kissing Mitch's ass here by any means, but if you're not open to those kinds of changes at any given time, you're closed down to growth. Right. You are 100% closed to growth. You're killing the series of interactions with people, right? You're closing off those yeah. interactions and you're allowing... Right. You, you're, you're now creating the narrative of those interactions that is going to determine the outcome in your life, right? Yeah. So like Taylor Swift, right? She's doing her big tour right now and everything else. She's kind God, of a hot I used topic. I to hate Taylor Swift. She's so hot. No, I... Well, <laughs> I, don't I, understand. I still don't find her attractive. She's not my type. I appreciate the business aspect of what she's got going on. Mitch I like knows. how she gives back she, to her people yeah, and everything else. She does. Do you see that she wrote all those bonus checks? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Well, it's easy to write bonus checks when you're making a fucking billion dollars it is. a fucking week. It is. But also, it's hard to write bonus checks when you're making all that money because you don't have to give it up. You know what I mean? That's unexpected. So I'm a generous person, so it's different for me. Right. But I'm, yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. But I get but it. like, do you think she got to the level she did without a vocal coach? Fuck no. Do you think she doesn't have a vocal coach every day, day in and day out, and she's at the top of her game? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, people at the high levels of anything have coaches. There's not a single high-level person out there that does not have a mentor or a coach. I can guarantee it. Yeah. And as soon as you, like, if you don't think they do, it's just because you're not aware of who it is. Or, or you're just ignorant. Right. Like you just like do you're just what you're choosing do. to not yeah, know, you're right? Just choosing, yeah. But like, exactly. um, Ben Shapiro <laughs> has a coach. He's probably got several, right? He's probably got a vocal coach. He's probably got like a business coach. He's probably got several, right? Oh, I'm sure. He and, does. and believe it or not, like some of his coaches <laughs> might be his storytelling coaches, right? Because a lot of what he does is tell stories and insert punchlines at the right time and build the build the tension and then you know, yeah. break the tension with a punchline or whatever. Like that's all planned. Yeah. And so I mean, a lot it's of very intentional. A lot of that stuff is natural. Yes. But the, the areas. So if you're naturally great at being a comedian or you're naturally great at writing jokes or you're naturally great at running business, that doesn't mean you're good at everything it takes to be at the top level. Like right. You may be an expert in one or two areas, but it takes 10 areas to get to that level. So you've got to have help in eight areas. Right. Whether like we, it be your wife, your, you know, your friend, your whatever, whether you're paying four or five other coaches for whatever. It's just like golf. Guy's got a mental coach, swing coach, you know, fitness trainer, yep. nutritionist, which yep. I don't understand. I mean, I, I've seen John Daly. He's a badass and he's fat as shit. <laughs> I know he doesn't have a nutritional coach. Yeah. But it's like, well, he does. It's just bush light. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you guys doing tonight for nutrition? <laughs> Pizza and beer, bro. Right. What are you doing? We're going to smoke three cigarettes. I yeah. mean, you know, but, but for people to stay at that level, they do. They have all the, they're paying all these different people to keep them on their game. And what I will say is, I never had really thought about it until recently. When you decide that you need those coaches and that you're going to invest the money to pay those people to help you, it makes you invested, right? It makes you literally think, I'm paying for this, so I'm going to do it. Well, you said the right word there. You said investment. Yeah, it's an investment. Investments come with returns. Yeah, but Spending if Spending money does not come with returns. Yes, but an investment... Yes. You're invested. Mm -hmm. I know, so dumb, right? You are... Um, holding yourself accountable with that investment to make yourself do the work to make that investment pay off. Right. Does that make sense? Right. It literally, you're, you're literally holding yourself accountable by making that investment. Right. It, so, so ultimately, God, I got to get some coaches apparently. <laughs> maybe, maybe but ultimately if you're doing great. So like as you're <laughs> selecting, if you're in a position to choose your coach, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you might be wallet. in a... <laughs> I owe awesome five bucks. <laughs> so, sometimes you're, you're not in a position to choose a coach. 
Sometimes the coach is chosen for you. It might be your manager or whatever the case may be. Or they just come out of nowhere because they're a good person. Sometimes a mentor (laughs) shows up out of nowhere, and they're willing to donate their time, right? Yeah, and mentors aren't – people have the stigma of mentors are – they have to be an older person that's more successful or they're more whatever. Well, they need to be farther down the path for sure. That's not true. I'm further down the path than you, and I think of you as a mentor. Well – you're sometimes some some paths you're farther down yes but other paths you're not but really right? a mentor can be anyone that is giving you knowledge um for free or taking you under their wing in just maybe a small little area it doesn't have to be your whole life but right. maybe one area they're like hey you should be doing this that is a mentor for you it's not a stigma it's a it's just it's just one area that someone's helping you in. Right. I guess what I'm saying is like I would not hire a financial coach that's currently filing bankruptcy. Right? They're not farther down the path than me if well, they're you don't you don't hire mentors necessarily. Correct. <laughs> mentors are free. Correct. Correct. But <clears throat> like we choose to take advice from the people who have been where we want to be. So we need to make sure that the advice we're taking from that person on that subject they are farther down the yes. path than we are in that subject. Yes, in, now, yes, in that subject. You're now, correct. Now, <clears throat> I'll agree with that. I, I know you've got a very happy marriage and everything else, but like what I'm saying is like I could take financial advice from you, even though you were going through a divorce, because the divorce has like you're, you're not going through a divorce. But I'm just yeah, using I, a hypothetical. Yeah I, yeah, I get it. Of like a guy could be going through a divorce, but still be a financial expert, and it yeah. doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't rule him out for me being able to take financial advice now. Yeah. I'm probably not taking relationship advice from him, but that's a different <laughs> subject, right? Yes, yeah, so, that's good. <laughs> so, like, you can pick your mentors yeah. accordingly. If yeah. a guy was really good at advertising and marketing, well, maybe he can give you marketing advice. Yeah, but 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 he's fat, and you're not going to be taking. But right, like, if he's if he's, he's fat and overweight, help you as a workout coach, right? Right, right. If he's fat and overweight, you're not going to use him for fitness advice. That's a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I, I like what Dave was saying too. Is I think when you say coaches, people think oh, I got to go out and hire a coach. I mean, a coach for me, I I go to Price Chopper. I'm looking at like the the poultry meat section, and Maybe the the chef or the butcher is like, hey, if you try this, I'm like, I didn't hire him, but I'm like, in a way, I'm like, well, he right. he knows how to cut yeah, up meat. That's so, a good example. So I'm just like, oh, okay. So it's like, I think, <clears throat> uh, and, and this is what it is. Like Mitch, Mitch's mind is very logical. So it's like, he may need like point A, point B, but like it's, it can kind of be broken up where it's like fluid, you know, too. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know. yeah, that's a good, well, and, that's an easy analogy. And when get you to. get in the right circles, you will find <laughs> people. And you will not have a logical explanation for why the person is pouring time into you, okay? Uh, You will find people that are willing to pour time and effort into you because they see something in you. That's somebody you want to hang on to, right? Yeah. I got a guy that I mentor for free. Um, He's a recovering addict. I see a lot of potential in him. He does not have the money. I just do it on my own time. It doesn't even cut into anything else. Like yeah. it's it's totally nights and weekends time, right? And I just do it for free because I see the potential in him. And I don't even know if he recognizes. He might, and if he does, great, right? Um, if he don't, if he doesn't, you're still it's no sweat effort, off my right, right. right. Yeah. It's no sweat off my back. I see potential in the guy, right? And so, um, you know, there are there's there's just. When a mentor gets to a certain level, they have a little bit of discretionary time left, and you'd be surprised if people are willing to use their discretionary time to invest it into other people. Well, they'll never get a return, right? I yeah. can invest my time in this one guy, and his, he could he could grow off and be a, a royal success, and it doesn't mean anything for me, right? Maybe I get a thank you dinner out of it in the future or whatever else, big deal. But like, I'm willing to do it because it's just the right thing to do. Well, and <laughs> off topic again... Like that's what we've lost in our culture today. Right. Is the I'm just gonna like look out for this guy for a while and see what happens. Right. Or I'm gonna have three employees and I'm gonna look out for all of them like they're my own kids. Right. Some of them are gonna flourish, some of them are gonna tank, some of them are gonna be losers, there's gonna be a lot of winners. But the next generation is based on that, right? Where yeah. we've got into this selfish mentality of of well, fuck them. I gotta look out for me. Well, you know what? That kid might need some encouragement. Yeah. You know, those employees you have, you know, maybe instead of going there and chewing their fucking ass every day, maybe if you just went in there and said, 
hey guys, I think you're all doing great. We're gonna work half a day today. I'm taking you guys to lunch, and we're, I'm gonna pay you for the rest of the day today. Right. You could literally, someone could be, one of those guys could be going through a really tough time and not realizing, you don't realize he just needs like a smile and some help or right. whatever. And that one little day could change his whole outlook. Right. Like we just, we've lost a lot of that, I feel like. Um, you know, that's a little why I think I, I like doing trade wins so much. Yeah. Like I just feel like it's my opportunity to give back. It provides a foundation to... To yeah. help change the, the shape of the nation. Yeah, and I think that... Small scale, but still. Yeah, I mean, I think that that, like, gives me purpose. Right. I think that it gives you a lot of purpose, probably. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I wish that... Well, I shouldn't say wish. I hope that a lot um, more guys our age are starting to realize that and starting to do that. I see it a lot. Right. And I'm, ho I'm, I'm hoping that's kind of the path that, you know, we're all taking right now. Yeah, yeah, so... But, as as we're wrapping this show Holy shit, we're around, an hour thirty minutes. I know. As we're as we're wrapping <laughs> this show around, the reason we talked about these specific topics is because if you are choosing to put yourself into an event where you're traveling and you're dedicating time to better yourself, you need to be thinking about these four or these three things, right? You need to be thinking about the levels of learning and where you're at in each subject. You need to be thinking about how life is a series of interactions, and you're in control of those interactions with your thoughts and your feelings and your actions and how you communicate with everybody around you, right? You don't go brush somebody off just because they come off rude. That guy might have been in a position to propel you forward, yeah. right? Um, and then you need to be willing to receive coaching, right? Chances are if you're coming to our event or any other event, you're going to learn something that you've been doing wrong. And you need to be okay with being told that because yeah. that's the, like the only reason somebody's willing to tell you that is because they see more in you and they want to see more out of you and they know you're capable of it. They're not right. even going to waste their breath telling it to you if they weren't positive that you were capable of it. So, um, that's, that's well said. Yeah. So, um, Guys, if you're coming to the event, we can't wait to see you. Make Hell sure yeah. you introduce yourself because we might not know who you are. But uh, if you're not coming to the event, make sure you uh, stay tuned with us as we put on future events, and um, and you have an opportunity to come to those in the coming months. But um, you know whether you're coming to the event or not, this episode is incredibly value on getting feedback and getting coaching and how we learn and grow and develop through life. So um, if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes, make sure you give us a five star review. Uh, I feel we've earned it. We've dropped now what like a hundred and Probably 120 episodes. hours or 150 hours of content for absolutely free. The least you could do is share the show with somebody who needs it and give us a five-star review on whatever platform you listen on. So until next week, guys, we will see you later. Love you, boys. Peace. Peace.